Hey guys, what up? welcome to this video. In this video, what I want to do is um, show you guys how to install Python um, and also uh, I already have Python installed on my machine. So the, the little tidbit here is that you can have multiple versions of Python installed on your machine. The latest version that I have right now is 3.6.1. Uh, but in order to make distributable software with Python, you need to have 3.4 because the um, only libraries out there that will make it into uh, an EXE file for your Python program uh, as well as being able to install it on users' machines and things like that. Um, you need to have Python 3.4 and earlier. If you wanted to read more and actually about why that is the case, um, I have a, uh, a blog here on my website which talks about um, some of the uh, Python bindings and that uh, they recently updated their bytecode in Python and, and this actual update from the Python community here ended up breaking a lot of stuff. Uh, so. Unfortunately, projects like Py2exe, which are very popular for making Python in the exe files, is no longer uh, you know, working on, on Python 3.5 or 3.6. So if you want to check out more information, make sure you guys visit my website, hipsterco.com. There's all kinds of uh, blogs, tutorials, all, everything, uh, all just coder-based. It's a coder-based website, so make sure you guys follow me there as well. Um, all right, so in order to get Python, let's go ahead and just, we're just going to say Python 3.4 installer. Because I'm on Windows, so I like to have a you know MSI installer, so I can go down here to the download page, and I'm going to click the uh, 86 installer. I'll go with the 64. That should work. All right, so this is going to install here now. Um, once again, the interesting thing in this setup here is that we're going to have two versions of Python. So I want to show you guys how to actually um, get that all set up for you. All right, so here we go. We're going to install for all users. It's going to go into the default Python 34 folder. That's fine with me. Uh, let's click on advanced real quick. Now uh, we'll go. All right, so next. So now this, uh, just going to go ahead and get this installed. All right, so now that we're finished, we're done. I'm going to open up a command prompt real quick. I'm going to type Python. Uh, you can still see I have the Python 3.6.1 being found. What I need to do is go over to where Python is installed. And this is in uh, my, my C drive here. So I'm going to go into the C drive, Python 34. And what I want to do is I want to rename the executable here to Python 3.4. All right, so that way if I type, if everything is on, on the path here, if I type uh, or open a command line, and I type Python 3.4, that's not going to work. So now we need to add this to our environment variable. So if you're on Windows, what you want to do is just search for environment variables. And we're going to go ahead and edit this. We're going to click on environment variables. And then inside of our path here, what I want to do is I want to edit this. And we're going to add a new option here. And what I want to do is actually point to where uh, th this is located. Also, what I can do is actually, all right, we're just going to copy this. C colon forward slash, and we're going to say Python 34. And um, the first thing we do is say, we'll just say Python 34. That'll work. And I'm going to add another one, which is uh, C colon forward slash. Python 34 scripts. Okay, okay. Close this down. Uh, now that we've closed that down, go ahead and type, uh, open up another command line and type Python 34, and you should now be able to run Python 34. So what we did there is we edited the environment variables, which is always confusing for newer developers uh, that are just getting started. But Windows has to know when you type Python 34, it doesn't just magically know what Python 34 is. Um, what you've done is you say, hey, when somebody types Python 34, we put this path inside of that, 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 we put this folder location inside of the path, and Windows uses the path to say, oh, you said Python 34, let me check the path and see if Python 34 executable matches anywhere. And if it does, it goes ahead and executes that program. So that's the magic behind why we can open up command prompt and pipe type Python 34 and run Python 3.4 and we can type Python and it's going to run 3.6. So now we have uh, two versions of, of Python on our machine. 
So if you guys want to use pip install with a specific version of Python on a Windows machine, what we would do is say uh, Python 3.4 for the executable, hyphen m, and then say pip, and that will actually use the Python version that you, that you want to use for pip install. Um, because what we want to do in this video is actually install the Python uh, e, uh, Py, Py2exe uh, project that actually works with Python 3.4. So let's go ahead and say Python 3.4 hyphen m pip install pi 2 exe oh wait, shit exe all right there we go so if i say python 3 4 and import pi 2 exe then you should have no errors now because python uh, pi 2 exe is now installed in python 3. And if you ever wanted to um, to actually figure out what's installed and everything, if you go to where Python is installed and you go into lib and site packages, you can see everything that you've installed. So you can see by us running that command, we installed py2exe. So it can be found um, you know, in that location. And that's what happens anytime we do a pip install. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and um, figure out what what we want to use for writing our code. And uh, what I like to use is Visual Studio Code because it's free. So make sure you guys check that out, Visual Studio Code. It's also open source, which is nice. So it can work on all kinds of different um, different operating systems. Uh, but download this. I have Python already installed on my machine. So what I'm going to do is uh, open this up to let's say new, or wait, new window. And I want to open a folder. So I'm going to put all my projects that anytime I'm doing tutorials and everything, I'm going to have this uh, tutorial here and we're going to go ahead and put in here. Uh, you know what? We'll even put it inside the Python folder and we'll say new folder py2exe. So in there, we're going to select that folder. So now I've opened it up into that folder location. So in order to get this working, what we want to do is go ahead and create a new file. And we're just going to call this uh, hello.py. And inside here, we're just going to say print hello world. And it's just a simple program. Uh, it's a simple Python script. I don't need to worry about the linter. And I'm going to add another file here, which I'm going to call setup.py. And this is the actual file that py uh, to exe needs in order uh, for this all to work. So I'm going to say from dist to list dot core import setup and this is something that was installed for you by, by default when uh, you install py2exe so we also need to use py2exe and that's why we're going to import that here and then we need to say setup and we're going to say console equals and then we just give it the location to to where our file uh, is located so since it's in the same directory we can just say hello.py I hate how it keeps asking me that. Um, so we can say hello, hello.py, um, and it tells it to look here to actually make the executable file. So in Visual Studio, if I right click and say reveal an explorer, I can open up the explorer, then I'm gonna type in here CMD so it opens up the command to that directory. So you can see we're inside the directory now. And what I wanna do is say Python, make sure you call it with the right version, 34. And I'm gonna say setup.py, and then I'm going to give it the name pi exe. So I'm telling you have to use the exe to create an executable file. And you can see that all of this stuff got done. And then now, if I look, I have a distributable folder here. So if I cd into that, you can see that we now have this hello.exe. So if I'm like hello.exe, you can see it runs hello world. So now what I can do is I can actually take that executable file and I can distribute it out to whoever I want. Um, and all they have to do is just simply click and then they're going to have uh, a working Python installation. Now, however, there is one caveat to that and that is that um, Py2exe uh, does not guarantee that this thing is going to run because unfortunately, especially on Windows with Python, you have to have a certain DLL which is called, uh, if you look at the documentation here, this M msvcr.dll is necessary uh, it has to be on a user's machine in order for them to be able to execute this Python script because otherwise like, you, you wouldn't want to expect somebody to just have Python installed on their machine or anything uh, and, that, and that's fine but this DLL has to work in order for that Python executable file uh, to be 
to, to be able to be run. So the best thing to do is actually to use this project down here, uh, which is called NO Setup, which is free to use. And this will allow you to um, actually make that a requirement that that, that DLL file uh, gets included in an installation. So when, um, when a user downloads your software, they're going to want to run the wizard. And this is what this project right here, which is free to use, uh, provides you with. So you can actually have the installer, and the installer can even install that DLL file that's necessary on Windows so that your executable does work the way that you want it to work when you distribute it. Now, also, once again, this is not going to work for Python 3.5 or 3.6. So as of right now, as of this video's time and date, you, you have to use Python 3.4 in order for these projects to work. So um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching, man. Have a good day. Bye. Hey, guys. So a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day. So this video is also sponsored by Eduonics Learning Solutions. And in the description tab below, you're going to find two links for Eduonics, And both of them are at a 50% discounted rate. So if you'd like to have money off, like I do, then uh, definitely be sure to check that out. But one of the projects they have here is uh, Projects in Laravel is the name of the course, and it says Learn Laravel Building 10 Projects. So you're going to build 10 different projects in this Laravel course. It's 50% off. You just have to visit the link, sign into your account, click Buy Now, and the coupon code will already be applied. So you just have to pick your payment option and go from there. Um, that is for learning Laravel, which is the popular PHP uh, framework that everybody seems to be talking about these days. The next uh, course that they're promoting this month, which is also at a 50% discounted rate, is the ability to choose 10 different courses here. So uh, you can choose 10 different courses. They're all at a discounted rate of, of uh, a flat rate of, of uh, $49.50 for 10 different courses here. And you can choose from any one of these uh, 75 courses that, that they have available. So once again, same thing, just click buy now. Once you select your 10 different courses, um, basically you go through, you click uh, 10 different courses and two more courses to unlock the bundle. There you go. Click buy now. And once again, you just pick your payment option and you're good to go. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you guys subscribe and vote on my uh, videos if you would, please. I appreciate that and have a good day, guys. Bye.